How is relative mass determined? Isn't it, like an average? it is an average, and it's based on the average of what? Uh, Chris? Uh, Adam? Uh, it's by the smallest average. Very good. So, and uh, on the relative mass of the beans, which bean was the smallest one? Jared? Which bean was the smallest? The uh, black the black. Black. Yes, navy. the black. Well, they call it the navy. They call it navy. It's black. It's actually black. Um, now, why didn't they choose on the periodic table? Why didn't they choose hydrogen? Because it's the smallest. Anybody? Raise your hand. It is diatomic. Very good. That is a good point. Uh, anything else? Any other reason why you would might not want to choose hydrogen for your relative mass other than it's diatomic? It's a gas. It's going to be difficult to measure or count more difficult than a solid would if you're trying to count a mole that's your objective so uh, Ryan really hit it on, on the head there at the nail that if you have a diatomic uh, substance you don't know if the isotopes are going to be the same in there they should be because hydrogen 1 is about 99 percent of the isotope however you know when you're trying to establish a, a norm you don't want to like just assume, you want to be pretty you know, clear on what you're doing. It would be easier to isolate carbon and make it into a diamond, carbon-12, what you do with the centrifuge and make your artificial diamond and then count it. So, 0 0.011, did everybody see that? Carbon says 12.011. Now we just read in the, in the chapter that carbon has a mass of 12.00, AMU up here. So what's the difference between this 12.0 AMU and what's in the textbook? What did I say here? Zero, zero, right here, 12.00 A and U, and the textbook says 12.011. You might know? There are four types of isotopes. So that means that there are the, they are the same element. So this lab differs from the previous one in that all the beans are the same element today. In the relative mass, they were different elements. So today what you're going to do, you're going to try to find out which one has more. Because like carbon-12 for carbon, which is found in sugar, carbon-12 is the most abundant. It's around 95, it's in the 90s, the high 90s. So today you're going to try, try to determine which one is the most abundant with the bean. With the atomic mass unit, the relative mass, they divided it by itself. So it's going to be 12.000. Whereas this one is an average of your isotopes. You still have carbon-12, carbon-13. The percent abundance is what we're going to do today. The lab is associated with percent abundance. And it's done by Flynn. So Flynn came up with this lab. They're one of the large lab manufacturing companies in the United States. You have Flynn and you have Sergeant Welch. So this is the one we're going to do today, the Flynn one. So for AMU-12, that's one atom, preferably carbon-12, because you'd have six protons, six neutrons, right? And the neutron mass is going to be a little bit more than the proton, but we're just going to divide it by itself. That's where we get our standard. Uh, this one's based on the isotopes. So you still have your carbon-12, 13, and 14. 
and you get your percentage. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the percent composition. And we the 12 and the 12.011. Raise your hand. Michaela. Okay, what does this number represent with 12.00? Oh, uh, what average? That's the average, so it'll be like the average is like a lot and then divided by how many of them and then the atom is like Very good. So this is one atom, and this one is an average of your carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So your average is not going to be 12.00, right? Your relative number will be, because they divided it by itself, and that's why it's a whole number, 12.00. Now, why did they choose carbon and go away from hydrogen? Because if you remember, Dalton was the one who used hydrogen. Why did they go away from it? Why didn't they stick with hydrogen? Well, Ryan said this morning that hydrogen is diatomic, and he's correct. It has, you have two of them. H2, hydrogen isn't found by itself, like one hydrogen, it's usually bound with another hydrogen. That makes it a little bit complicated to work with, as far as one atom. We like to use one atom because of the isotopes. Could you find H2 only with, one I with zero neutrons? Probably, it's about 99% that, but what if you don't? It just creates a lot of problems. With carbon-12, you can isolate carbon-12 in a centrifuge, and in the centrifuge you can extract only the carbon-12, and then that could be your standard. So this is the standard, carbon-12. This is not an isotope. Is everybody clear? 12.00 is not an isotope. An isotope would be like uh, 13, because you'd have 6 protons and 7 neutrons. What's 6 plus 7? <coughs> So 6 plus 7 is 13. Isotopes have to do with different types of carbon based on the number of neutrons, right? So if you have carbon 12, how many neutrons do you have here? Six. So you have six neutrons, six protons. Now what would carbon 13 be? Seven. You have seven neutrons and six protons. Is everybody clear? And then if you had like carbon-14, it would be what? No, it would be eight neutrons and six protons. Well, six plus eight is what? Fourteen. So you have three common isotopes of carbon. Because seven would be nitrogen. Seven protons would be nitrogen. Remember the neutron is the associated with death or how the isotope can change. Now, it won't always depends on whether it's stable or not. So when we consider isotopes, that's the term we typically use for being stable, and the radioisotopes is the one we use for it's going to have a half-life. So you might want to note that. When you hear radioisotope, that's one that has a half-life. Now, all of the isotopes for the elements above 82, like bismuth 83, are radioisotopes. That is, they all have half-lives. Only um, isotopes of carbon other than 12 and 13 are radioisotopes. So there are two stable ones, the rest are radio. Now this again is for only the isotope of carbon-12. That's why it's 12 AMU. And why did they go to 12, correction, why did they go to carbon instead of hydrogen? Why did they move away from hydrogen? To determine the relative mass, you gotta figure out what your standard's gonna be. Now in the lab we did on relative mass, the standard was the smallest beam, the black beam. Right? Why did we choose the smallest one? Because we can make all the numbers whole numbers by doing that. So it was 1 or 1 1.2 or 1.3, 5. But 1 should have been the standard for the black being the smallest one. And we divided the mass by itself. Remember that? So when I was checking your, your work on your data table, if you had 1 for the AMU for the, for the smallest one, obviously you got a check mark. If you didn't have 1 in the data table, uh, you got that wrong. Now, the periodic table 
for the elements, hydrogen was the initial element that John Dalton chose. But why don't we use hydrogen now for the atomic mass unit? Anybody know? Why don't we use that now? It's the lightest, but we're not using that. We're using carbon. Why are we using carbon instead of hydrogen? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Points. Raise your hand. Koenig. Close. Uh, how about John? Can you help us? Why John Dalton chose hydrogen for the atomic mass unit? We shifted that to carbon. Why? No, because hydrogen's diatomic. That means you have to have two of them. It doesn't exist by itself. It exists H2. And because of that, you could have two different types of isotopes bound together. You could have H1 and H2 making H2. Remember, the neutrons determine the isotope, right? So that was confusing, and we don't like confusing. So we chose carbon-12. So carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, and it's a solid. You don't have any of this diatomic stuff to mess around with. Everybody clear? So 12 AMU is for one carbon with a mass of 12, because there's six protons and six neutrons. So they divide it by itself, and we got our relative mass, our standard, based on carbon. Element. Well, today, each bean represents an isotope, so there are going to be four different isotopes. Now, on the data table that I provided you, you'll see they have three isotopes. I put four there because every time we go into the lab, something typically has changed from the previous lab we did. It's like Ford always adds or makes their car better every year. So you have to think like that. What am I going to do to change this lab and make it better or prepare you to deal with that? So there are four isotopes of, this, of the same element. That means they got different numbers of neutrons. Is everybody clear? The isotopes. Now some are radioactive and some are stable. So regular isotopes are considered stable. Radioisotopes are considered not stable. Does everybody understand the difference between these two? Stable and not stable. What does not stable mean, Claire? As a half-life. That means it can change into something else. So carbon-14 as a radioisotope is going to change into something else, nitrogen. Uranium is a radioisotope. All right, so in the lab today, the way you want to calculate the percent composition, or the, the percent uh, abundance, you're going to take the mass of the one bean variety divided by the total mass of the beans times 100. Now, each bean container is going to be different. So don't look off your neighbor. Don't count out a number of beans. The point is that with the percent abundances, they're the same throughout nature. So if I go and look at a carbon sample in Russia, it's going to be the same as the carbon sample in China. So we don't want to count out a specific number of beans. We just want to go with what's in the container. So you're kind of getting an idea of these percent abundances. So one bean variety by the total bean mass times 100. And here's an example of how you can count the beans because they ask you to count the beans. So you just take three of them, three black beans, put it on the balance, let's say it weighs 0.49. You put all your black beans on the balance, let's say it weighs 39. You do your conversion factor here, dimensional analysis, you get 239 beans. So you can count these pretty quickly without like individually counting all of them. Did you make all 80 laps? Yeah. You did? How long did it take you?
Yeah. This is around 98%. That is carbon 12. And carbon 13 is, is less than 1%. And then there's trace of carbon 14, which is what we use for radioactive.